He's uh, very, very deep right now. Now it's going to put him in a bit of a peculiar spot. As E.T. is going to TP in. Nothing to say. Doesn't have too much damage to dish out now with the orb and waning rift on cooldown. But he's going to run into the grasping hands of the Ancient Apparition, who's able to pick up first blood here. Allow the next wave to connect through. Savage will probably even tank up one or two of these hits as well if he needs to, just to make sure that the Siege Creep is mm -hmm. alive and well. Quite more. <laughs> so, I wonder if it's going to be any different here, just with making sure a lot of these uh, Ancient Camps are blocked up. Zephyr's just kind of walked himself into <laughs> death. He's, uh, <laughs> Faith Beyond gets it. He's got to be happy. <laughs> you see the pings come out as well. He's like, hey, you just stole my kill, brother. Come on. Absolutely dominating that very start of the game. He's, I mean, they're clearly feeling it as well. They're just bottling. Thank you. I was going to say, I mean, he gets a deny for that. Well, when I think of a slow lineup, I think of like sitting back and not doing anything. But for Ev, on his Venomans, he's not doing nothing. He's That's actually true. putting a lot of pressure on the bottom side of the map. T1 have. Smoke rotation behind them, though. Up and through. Great spot here. They avoid all the wards. And for Ev going to be the price to pay is that movement from LGD. 50 seconds out of the bounties, but a, a big kill for Forev. On Forev. Hello, Ame? Gonna be careful himself as well. Telekinesis, drag back. 23 Savage even getting involved. Ame has to pop the battle trance. Now gets a brute as well. Straight on top of the earth, but a Savage gonna get brought back here and he'll actually end up falling. But you see Carl and Whitemon turning on its head. They get a couple of answers in the kills there, and even a kill up top as Faith Beyond. We should see his farm accelerate a fair amount. Unless he gets killed. Yeah, <laughs> once he gets killed, unfortunately, because the damage is there. Although, Zephyr's keeping his life for a fair duration, runs into the Ice Blast, unfortunately. Zing Q pinpoint snipes him down as Carl and Y trying to man fight Y. He might actually be able to win this because he did get the Ice Blast follow up as well, but Rubik just keeps his life. And turns to snipe him down with a fade bolt. Very nice to dumb. And you got the extra control coming through potentially over the coil. They see the Coria. They also see Savage farming in the lane. He's actually going to oh no. run back to the rest of Radiant. Nice maneuver once again. We saw this previously from LGD. When they wrapped around to try and kill Forev's Venom Ansar. And he has the last components coming out to him now. Oh no. He's going to die, but yeah. At least he picked up the Ags. As long as the Courier doesn't die. That's, that's the that, Yep, yeah, that's the main thing. Nice combo, says Jinq. Ice Blast, when you get the connection, can do a, a whole lot of work. Meanwhile, but... Carl? Nothing to say. It doesn't jaunt away, actually. I believe it was... Silence or Telekinese something, but nothing to say now. I was back up a couple seconds along with the blink. Carl... <laughs> He's stuck in the trees now. Carl's gonna move. We need to get over here fast. Carl's not moving... Savage is going to scout it out, but they just got the call. That's onto two as well. Four star breaks it, but once again, they're going to get the push through. Savage dodges the Ice Blast. Now with the Roar as well. Venomance is protected with the pipe, but Radiant. They've used a lot here. They got the Age, but can they get out? Nothing to say. Massive silence onto four. Homing Missile still. Elder Titan. They're able to claim their high ground LGD, but it looks like Rev, along with the rest of T1, want to push on forward. They want more than just the Elder Titan, but are they going to be able to get it? Fred, four star, drops a Gale along with the ultimate. Carl's got the follow-up as well. Army's got to be careful. Even though he's got this Ages, he's going to get burnt down all his health with the poison, even stunned up thanks to the cold feet. Army, Army, keeping his life. He's okay. Meanwhile, they actually lose in Q. Fred ticks him out there, so... But... We've got a neck-and-neck -neck game. That's one thing we're always looking for. A close game is top, Zephyr. For a star, but they still have an immense amount of damage as the Earth Splitter will claim him. Instantly, the TP's out. Echo Slump's gonna enable him, even nothing to say, just making sure he drops the ultimate. But Dai, they do have vision at the moment. Why, man? He's chunking down Cole. Oh my lord. Cole, he almost got three hit by the AT. Oh, it's so funny just seeing this hawk just dive down. Suicide. Oh, Carl drops the coil. Might see the dive bomb. Might not even be required. They want to keep the vision of the TP rotations that are coming through from T1. A quick burst of the Rubik's life as the position two is going to fall. So now it's actually Radiant that want to think about walking in Roche. Forever hasn't really been able to get set up. They've got their own dive bomb as well, actually. The Rubik's stealing this. They've got to be careful, though, as the Ice Blast flying through. They get the pass by on a couple heroes. Forever still gets the ultimate off, but BKB, where they don't kite this time. So Arme shreds apart two heroes, and this should enable them to walk back 
and claim their second rose to the game, but Dyer still stick around. See what they can bring to the table. Surely. He's got no mana. Zephyr, nothing to say. Even finds 23 Savage. Oh my Ooh. god, look at the four star push out. That's a lot of damage here. They might just be able to bring him down, and they do. Faith Beyond follows up with the raw. Savage can't do anything there with the chain lockdown. You know, like, yeah. it, it is all sizzle, no steak for mine. Huh? Raw? Down to the spoiler, southern though. side, Carl actually just gets melted once again. Not seeing the Rubik get abilities off, and now Ame wants to continue to chase more. Orchid out. He's preventing him from locking on heroes thanks to the ultimate, but Ame doesn't give a damn. He just wants to push them back, and back they'll go. T1 behind the T2 tower to safety. I don't know if they can commit for this, though, because Ame's got Glimmer. He's also got the Ages of the Immortal as well, so T1... Gotta be careful. 23 Savage, though, wants the man fight. Pops the cooldown. So hasn't got the BKB off just yet. He's getting kited at the moment, but another turn. Army pops the BKB. Oh, nice. It's a That's lot of up. damage. Down with the battle trance as well. Savage gets a little bit of distance with the four star, but he's just gonna get slowed from the Scardi. Army wants more blood as well. Forever. Nice four star, but it looks like White Mon. That's the target. Army. He's found easy pickings of the inch and will secure a triple kill as T1 only scratch LGD. The decision making usually. You know, a China Carl's nice coil. Carl, the stolen coil with the double support. See, but the, oh, nothing to say. That's even better. Finds four, but there's no follow up. Savage will bring him down. The E blades that they can look to burst through. Honestly, the nullifiers would be really effective on someone on LGD because they've Rev. got like what four, four stuffs here. Uh oh. Force. Aeon gets pop. Oh, oh the invisible blade actually back. brings him back. No. Oh no, forever. He's down. Seventy seconds. How close to buyback? Carl actually gets a blink telekinesis, drags back Y. The rounded choke point. Let's see if LGD can bring the numbers over to protect their position five, and they will definitely be able to do so. Chan just getting a lot of heals thanks to the nature's attendance. White one somehow still alive. It's gonna end up falling. Now Savage as well is gonna be careful, but get some distance back. And now they're gonna walk up, and they've got a 95% win probability. And with the troll, all the buffs on the higher ground, Solar Crest, AC, Inner Beast, Medallion, Vlads, everything for Arme. It's going to be so difficult to bring him down. They are trying though. Coil drop, Arme getting chunked down. Doesn't want to use any of the defensive factors just yet. But they might have to. Abyssal Blade out, and now with the BKB, along with the ultimate forever, protected with the Aeon Disc, going to be able to get the ultimate. Now with the double four star forever, he gets some space, but they've already lost two. Savage as well, unable to manfight the Scotty. He can't disengage, he has to change his mind, and now walk on forward. But Savage has got to be careful, nothing to say, hunting the back. Do they have the extra damage to bring him down? Silent timing miss. Oh, Savage! No, he's in there. Gyro will keep the life. Ooh. He needs to go something that's actually able to make an impact right now, I think. Ag shard might be kind of okay considering you are doing this high ground defense. <laughs> Quick Lotus Orb, Zephyr is not going to be happy with that initiation. Now with the call on the back line as well, followed up with the Ice Blast. They're going to be careful because they can bring down Savage, which they will be able to do so. No buyback, and that should be all she wrote. The Alchemist outside the base, army. Still falling low, but it's just the poison Nova. His two heroes drop, nothing to say. Still playing with his food as well, just holding them back in the coil. Finally deal with the ages, but... I mean, we just see is these fights not been going in the favor of T1 to say the least. Very struggling to find that start, and LGD just too strong. They'll slow this game out, and slowly bring down the racks. I say slowly, but I mean, Ame just shreds to him. And now he even turns to try and shred down Carl. Lotus gives him some space, another four stuff, but the day gone. Three down, T1, and they're even just going to try and force him out of this game. Ame hitting tier four towers. It looks like LGD going to be victorious in this game one. Yeah, it's exactly what they needed. They obviously have a lot more to play for than the, the T1 boys at this stage, given how close the games are going on, on the other stream as well. He's just playing around these uh, bounty rune areas, maybe popping the hex a little bit too soon. And Zephra, I'm not sure what you're doing there, buddy. <laughs> That's a hell of a way to put it. He's just in no man's land. It's going to be real nice. White Mon, do they have the damage here with just these two heroes? I mean, shield's now down, and they definitely will. That acid spray. Coil. Shout innocence, but it's just your five clockwork. <laughs> He's just tanks it. All right, you know. Let's see his inq. He's getting chased up. He's level three now. Not stuck at level one, but 
I don't think that's going to save you when you're silenced up underneath your tower. Maybe it will, though. He's able to get far enough back. They will need the help of the Shaman to get the kill on White Mon. But it looks like Shin Q being a, a little bit worried here about the potential the we were wrapping through. At least they have big old global potential with the Thunder God's Wrath, so nothing to say. Unfortunately, he doesn't get that kill, and that's definitely something that the Zeus thrives on with that kill still potential. You can make that kind of play to rotate through. Faith so Beyond. Um, picks up the Arcane Rune, they go on top. Oh, he's ultra dead, yeah. <laughs> You see the uh, the alchemist against someone like the the timber. Whew, that pure damage along with the percent as well with the whirling death. Nice use of Zinq Century though. He just gets a freebie and oh, <laughs> that's solo experience as well for the shaman. So he's about to be level five, living freely with a kill like that. He's been a, a part of all four killers right now from LGD. And they want to try and answer the aggression that Forever is putting up at this T1 tile, and they will be able to do so successfully. There, nicely done. Gets the clip on the Shackles here. Forever doesn't make it down to the low ground. He's so... No, it's not enough. Why? It was close. Very, very close. That's a big kill. Nothing to say. We'll end up peaking that one. Mm -hmm. They can just look to extend their lead. Yeah, because with that Nimbus, all you really need is the control from the Shaman, and that could be enough for the Thunder God's Wrath and the extra Aghanim's potential as this one continues on. But Daya, they're actually smoking up, trying to move to Arme. They might be a little late as the Black Hole's gonna get dropped. They should, oh, Hex, quickly done. He gets a little bit of health back from the Wand and the Strength Trends, but it's not gonna matter with the TP rotations, LGD. Looking to clean up, but nothing to say. He's in a peculiar in spot right now. He doesn't have any help. He's just gonna try and stand his ground and chunk out some damage, but that damage will not be enough. All they do is bring down the Abba, and it's gonna net them three deaths in their own regard. Uh, and just to make sure that, you know, when he's making these, uh, having these aggressive farming patterns, that he's in not going to get punched too heavily for it. Prev. Nice talk. Yeah, they're going to be able to catch out both and pushes back the puck into the hex. Beautiful play from Innocence. Clean initiation. Now that he's got more of those points into the Grievous Greed as well, you can see that it's really going to be starting to have a lot more of an impact when you pick up these bounty runes. Faith Beyond. Moving in forward, Frev's pretty difficult to bring down, but a nice Serpent Ward trap on the higher ground means T1 can't really push on forward to help protect Forev. Hook shot in, Y continue with the chain control. They're gonna drip the Midnight Pole, so it will make it very difficult for them actually to commit on forward. And see, so they turn now, finally, Radiant Edward gone the higher ground, but uh oh, Timber, he just runs into the full nuke potential. They're able to bring him down now to the eastern side. Cole, he's hunting the Zeus. Nothing to say, he gets a little bit of distance, but the wraparound still Arme cleans up the back. Zephyr will pay the price. Massive amount of damage, man. Arme will find the kill. Whitemon, he's going to end up falling in the grave. It only happens as a result of T1 not effectively punishing them, right? They're, they're combating slow with slow. They're thinking, well, our strategy is going to win, but not as of yet. And not as of yet, indeed. As he's doing very well to, to get the farm, as Dyer actually still... Finding a target here, T1 weren't able to disengage fast enough, so the Abaddon's going to get caught out. Looks like at least Forever and the rest of the boys should be able to make it to safety. But meanwhile, mid lane, actually, nothing to say is going to get caught. So while they were making that play work out, Carl gets a free pick. T1 and group does five as well. Misses on the Boundless. They still got the hook shot forward once again, Whitemon. It's going to be the target for the initiation here. Can they get him out of the cogs? They will be able to, but now why? He's committed into the middle of the fight, so he's going to get punished. Ooh, they might be just a little bit too quick, though. Whitemon needs to body block the hook shot here. You can't position. Oh, no, they break. They get the coil. Army's going to be careful. BKB, Wukong to the choke point. A nice amount of damage coming through. He's able to steal the ages yeah. as well for Army. And they just shred down the Abaddon, but they're able to kite them. Wukong's going to get expired. Just quick enough, they don't know that this Nimbus has been delivered over yet either. They were under the cover of smoke. I thought they might have used it just for the little bit of vision Go. advantage. And there it is. Nimbus drop, chains as well. Locky in the timber saw. Army's still got the double damage rune to be able to utilize as well. Cogs pushed back. Forev's not going to be able to get the chains away. He's got a decent amount of farm, honestly, but it just feels a little scattered. You know, he's got a, a hood, a single sand, oh. and a plate mail right Thank now. You? So. I, I, they got the kill on the puck. Zeus has got Thunder God. It's not even required. Shiq just solo kills the puck. Team fight initiation. You've got the clockwork, of course, and we've seen a number of times oh, again? What they found out here. Again, oh, 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 no. oh, 
Is Blink hot? Die to the Nimbus. Yep. Oh no. Shinku might be a trade kill here. They do a nice job to be able to stop the chain. They were going to try and drop the Serpent Wards as well. Blink oh, away. So Absolutely no chance. Shinku's a god. So, Enigma. Oh, mid lane once again. Why sets up. Shinku's Fuck got the fall the Hex. Where's the protection? Oh, there is none. so good. Carl will fall. Nice little pickup with a oh, ceremonial Ame. robe, of course. They found him. Ame's going to be okay, but the main target's actually clockwork here as Ame gets the safety. Why? Pushed away, getting a little bit of help. The team are finally coming over with a whirling death and all the damage that Frev's able to dish out is too much for them to handle. Still, Ame is actually playing with food right now throughout the eastern tree line. Yeah, they're nasty. Ame, that's aggressive, oh. Malefus, Shinkyu. Nice counter initiation, Ame. Lotus all back. The Visible Blade's not going to provide him anything, but now the hookshot follow up as well. But the big KB, Ame, he just turns in man fights. They cannot handle the Monkey King right now. He's the king of the game. As the rest of T1 zoning away, but 23 Savage is going to be careful. At least they'll get the kill on White Mon. Carl still in the area. Tries to find the kill on the Shaman. He will be successful, but the Cogs push him over. Carl protected with a phase shift. Can he get anything off? He cannot. Orb, Bloody raining golden rift. monkey statue. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you could take that fight without the puck anyway. It's gone to the point where I think you need oh, the puck dagger, but they're just going in. Simultaneous jump on top of the timber saw. He doesn't have the reactive armor stacks. So the forever's going to get brought down. White Mon even might join him as well in the grave. He gets a kill on top of the clockwork. Meanwhile, Shaman trying to battling over with Weaver, but 23 Savage actually is going to end up falling here with the chain lockdown. It was plenty from Shin Q. And now just the slow demise as the Abaddon will get chased down here. Arme and Faith beyond. Daddy Gaben says it's 93% probability right now for, for T1. And well, they might at least get a pick off on Y. Does have Shin Q on the back line once again. Without the Serpent Wards. Oh, nice blink away from Shinkyu. Actually sets up for Y to hook shot. And now the reinforcements are finally coming over. They're going to be careful how deep they dive because they're going to look to turn with oh, the burst dude. damage. Oh, it's just beautiful. LGD, too goddamn strong. Army, Abyssal Blade, straight on top of Forever. Even Faith Beyond is going to try and jump the Abaddon as well. Doesn't have the borrowed time. And Forever is unable to have an escape route here as LGD collapse and find three. LGD have been so far. Maybe just oh. wait for a couple of their cooldowns. You've got the refresher orb available again. Straight on out. Yeah, Ame's taking a decent amount of damage. Ko's gonna get dropped as well. They did with the first life. Now the black hole can come into play here if they can lock down the monkey king. Are they gonna be able to do so? However, where's the enigma playing more on the backline? Ame massive Wukong just forces T1 to disengage and reset. Don't know if that was Dyer's or Radiance. Shinku, there's the Hex on the Weaver. A bit of a oh, skewed no, way to start as Puck's just going to get brought down. 23 Savage has to pop the BKB very early on. There's no hook shot now to cancel the potential of the BKB Black Hole. But ready, they need to reset and group up for this ultimate. They're not able to do so, though, as White Mun caught away from the rest of their team. The Abaddon inside the river. Man, it's just... You, you said it perfectly. A clinical performance from LGD. You know, it just feels like it's been lacking overall. Puck. Carl's been caught out multiple times. They found nothing to say, but is it going to be enough? Aghanim's stun's going to last a while. Savage is on top of him as well. Zephop blinking. Nothing to say. Will fall. No buyback right now on the Zeus. So they get one kill. He's got the Cloak of Flames. He's got the Flamethrower. He's role-playing right now. <laughs> he's oh, role-playing death, him, though. though. He's so far out. No buyback as well. Well, Zeus is down for 30. He's got he's got bots though, so you can rejoin them. But OGD. I'm gonna say like they can wait, but why? Why yeah, like, wait? Where <laughs> you can do things like this. Exactly, just multi-shot surfing ones. The pistol blade's actually out on the weave up, but there we go. Zephyr, BKB. Where's the way to be able to deal with it? But Zephyr's gonna kind of show things the illusions here. Monkey able to finally pop that ultimate. And they looked at turn as LGD find the chain. Savage makes it back inside the base. The buybacks are coming through with the Serpent Wards. They're finally going to work as the throne's exposed. And LGD looking to try and take the series 2-0. to zero, And they will be able to do so successfully. The last map for T1. As they're going to end up finishing this with a 2-7 to seven map count.